Hello, this is Wes with Buddy RC. Recently, we've had quite a few questions on how to properly bind your DSM2 compatible transmitter to the new Speedix S250 Quad with CC3D. We've also had quite a few questions about the proper way to tune your PIDs. Now, the PIDs are very personal for each person. The motors, ESCs, transmitters, there are many different factors in the way PIDs work and how they affect the way your quad will fly. Although I won't go into detail on how to tune them in depth, I will give you a starting point by maybe giving you some of the PID settings I've been using here recently. So let's get started by binding your DSM2 compatible transmitter to your CC3D board. First off, I want to make sure everybody understands the importance of making sure that the props have been removed from your multi-rotor anytime you have it on the bench working on it. Anybody who's been around these, these things spin up all the time, and when you're messing with the transmitter and trying to tune stuff in, you have to move these sticks around quite a bit. So it's not uncommon to have an accidental spin up of the, of the props. And believe it or not, even these small, cheap, crappy props will slice your finger right open. So let's get started. Uh, first off, I'm going to be using a Spectrum DX7S as our DSM2 compatible transmitter. Now the only thing you really have to do with this is create a new Acro model. And then that Acro model, about the only major thing you have to pay attention to is if you're creating any dual rates. Now on the dual rates here, the only major thing you really have to pay attention to is the Expo. You can change your Expo and now I set this up for my wife. So you're looking at 25 on your high rates and 40% on your low rates for your dual rates. Do not change that D slash R from 100 on a multi-rotor. What that does is it limits the travel or limits the ability for the motor to spin up and run correctly and it will actually create some pretty bad unstable flight conditions. Alright, now that we have the transmitter set up and ready, we're going to go over to the computer, plug in the Speedix quad, and get it ready for binding. So to start here, we're going to plug in the quad into the bind into the port, the USB mini USB port here, right above my finger. Okay. Next, we're going to go down in the lower left here and hit configuration. And you'll notice here in the upper corner of the board setup, we're going to actually change this flex port, make sure DSM is in there. Now you're going to need to remember this here. Later on in the settings, it's going to ask you for a number, a binary number. That binary number is going to come from this section here. That's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we want to select DSM on our flex port. So then in the binary section of it, at the bottom of the page, we're going to hit System. Scroll to the top, normally it's going to look like this here. So you're going to hit the arrow beside settings, scroll down the list, you're going to go to HW settings, and then you're looking for DSMX bind. Now here's the binary number you need to enter. One, two, three, four, five. Now 
Now once that's set, we're going to go back to the top of the page here. Hit the Save button. Now what I like to do is unplug this. You need to reset it for all the settings to really take effect. So we're going to unplug our USB cable, make sure our battery is unplugged, let it sit for a few seconds. We're going to plug our USB back in. Wait for it to be recognized in Open Pilot by the red and green and yellow bars. And I want to go back down here and double check and make sure DSMX bind stayed at 5. And also on our configuration tab that this flex port stayed at DSM, which it looked like it did. All right, we should be ready for binding. So what we're going to do is make sure our transmitter is turned off. I'm going to unplug our USB cable. And we're going to plug our battery into our quad. You will notice the flashing rapid orange light here on the satellite. We're going to put our transmitter in bind mode also by holding the bind button and turning it on. Now realistically that light should turn solid orange. Once it does, let go of the button. Rebooted and you are now bound to your new Speedix 250 quad. Now that's not the completion of it. What we're going to do at this point is we're going to unplug the battery. You need to take the quad out of bind mode and you do that by going back through the same process as we did before. And then we're going to plug it back into our computer. Plug it back into that same mini or micro USB port. We're going to do that process right in reverse. We're going to take it out of bind mode. And in order to do that, we need to go back into the settings page. Scroll on down. Make sure you're connected. And scroll on down and change that number 5 back to 0. And that will take us out of binding mode. And when you're done, make sure you go to the top of the page. Hit save. All right. Now what I like to do in this case is go ahead and reboot the reboot the multi rotor again. Unplug. Plug it back in. And we're going to make sure that number zero stated a number zero. And we are good. Number zero. Now we're going to go back to the configuration page and we're looking to make sure that that flex port stays at DSM. And that should have it. Good, we're ready to go. Now the transmitter has been bound to the satellite. Now we have to get the CC3D board to recognize all the movements of the transmitter. And to do that, we're going to go over to the configuration tab on the left side. It says inputs. Right there. Alright. And then at the top here, start transmitter setup wizard. And it's going to tell you that it is now setting it to always disarm. 
basically you can't fire it up while you're in the transmitter wizard. But this is also why we want to make sure the props stay off. All right, at this point here, the quad will not talk to the transmitter, your Spectrum DX7S, until you power the quad up. So we have to plug the battery back in at this point. So with it still plugged into the computer, we're just going to connect our battery. And what that does is links us back to our transmitter. Anytime the battery is disconnected, the transmitter will not talk. Okay. And you'll notice a flashing orange light. That means we're connected. I'm just going to set the quad off to the side. And then we're just going to follow the prompts on the screen. All right. I'm going to go up here to upper left. We're going to hit inputs. It's basically saying welcome to the transmitter configuration page. We're just going to follow the prompts here. And the middle. I'm going to hit next. The next one it's asking you if you want to set up an acro or a heli mode. We want acro. Hit next. And it's going to ask you what type of transmitter you're using. Mode 1, 2, 3, or 4. Here in the US we're using mode 2. On this screen you typically have to scroll down to see the next button. Next. And then here's where you get to the important part. There's a couple things to remember here. For one, the biggest thing that I always forget Make sure if you have throttle cut set up on your transmitter that it's turned off. Otherwise, it'll never recognize the thr throttle channel. Alright, we're going to take our throttle cut off. The other thing is be very careful when you move an axis. If it's asking for throttle and you ever so gently hit the, the yaw or the rudder, it's going to then think that the rudder at the yaw is now the throttle channel. And if you run into that, just hit the back button until you get back to the beginning and just start the process over again. So here we're going to press up on our throttle. And now it asks for roll. So we're going to do the same thing. Pitch. And then y'all. Next, it's going to ask you for your channel 5. This will be the switch that you want to use for your flight stabilization or your mode switch. We are using on the DX7S the flap because it is a three position switch. Okay, the next one is accessory 0. This is going to be channel 6. And usually we try to use this as a slide or a dial because this is the channel you're going to use at a later date to put your PIDs on so that you can adjust them later down the road. On the DX7S, we're going to use this dial here. And when we're done, we're going to put it in the center. Now, we don't have any more channels or any more slides we're going to use. So from here on out, we can just hit Next or Skip. Down at the bottom of the page here. You're going to notice it's asking for accessories one, and we're not going to use that. We don't have one. Next skip. It's going to ask for accessories two. Next skip. Now it's going to ask you to zero and center all of your sticks. And this is very, very important also. We're going to set center stick here. Center stick. Our flight mode needs to be in the center, and our dial needs to be in the center as well. Now, once again, we're going to go down here and hit Next. Now, at this point, it's going to ask you to move all your axis in its full orientation so that it can calculate the exact throw of each axis. So we're going to go up here 
and you need to make a full round and then when you're done you need to check and make sure that it matches on the screen. Same here. Once you make a full round bottom left as long as it is bottom left you're good. Now if you hit bottom left and it went bottom right, then you know that your roll is backwards. I'm going to move our flight mode switch. You should notice that it moves up here on the screen, center, left. And we're going to move our dial. And you should notice that turn here. Once you move a full turn or two, it'll. All right. You'll notice it goes. Then we're going to center them all back up. We're going back to the next. Okay, on this screen is where you'll be able to change and reverse your directions. If your pitch was off, roll, any of that, you're just going to put a check mark in. I previously set this up so it has some of them in. And you can check when you hit your, even in this menu, when you hit, when you hit, a, it should mimic what you're doing. Okay, once you've verified that your directions are all correct, I'm going to go down and hit next. Alright, and it's basically telling you you have completed the setup wizard your transmitter. Now there are still a couple more steps we need to take here to finish up and you can do that by hitting the next button. Okay it's going to ask you on every multi-rotor I've ever dealt with what action you want to take in order to activate or arm the airframe. Um, I typically use y'all right that seems to be pretty typical for a model and then when you're done before you move on always hit save and you'll notice a green check mark verifying that it's saved correctly all right now the last thing for the transmitter up here at the top, your flight mode setting switch. You'll notice stabilize one, stabilize two. And as you move your flight mode switch, you'll notice the upper left hand slide actually move. So it's easier to identify what you want to put in which box. Okay, so in the all the way in the up position, the switch is corresponding. We want that switch in that position to be our flight stabilization mode. That's going to be st uh, stabilized three, which is attitude, attitude, and access lock. The middle mode, we want to be attitude, attitude, rate for y'all. And then the all the way in the down position, which up top here is position one, choosing stabilized one. We want that to be our rate mode. That is not the self-leveling. If you turn, it stays turned. Alright, 
So that's all there is to setting up our flight modes, setting up our transmitter. Now if you have not done so yet, come down here to the bottom left and to the welcome screen. Make sure you have done your vehicle setup wizard. This sets your throttle end points, your motor start and stopping points, uh, checks the direction of your motors to make sure they're going in the correct direction, among a few other things. And then after that is complete, I'll give you a quick screenshot of my PIDs just to get you started. Back to the configuration page. On the left hand side, we're going stabilized. And here are my PIDs. Now I have this set for my wife. So it's really, really docile. Should be great for a beginner. Stick scaling's way down. Acro Plus factor's way down. I put a little bit of Expo in the controller itself. And these are the settings I have. Uh, you may see a little bit of oscillation and in, in heavy wind. Um, it'll probably take four or five flights to really tune it in, but those are the basic settings that got me flying pretty decent. And then every controller is different. Every transmitter is different. That should get you pretty close. Now one last thing I would like to do before I go here is the flight data here in the bottom left. If you notice here, it gives an actual correct depiction of your multi-rotor as it sits. So if you're sitting on a flat level surface and this artificial horizon is off, um, then you need to re-level. I notice sometimes in the wizard it doesn't exactly level correctly, so always come back to this. It's a good idea anytime you hook up to come to this page and make sure that is correct. If this is not correct, your PITs will be off, the machine won't fly correctly, will not fly straight. Alright guys, hope this helped. Maybe when I get in here in the next couple of weeks, we'll try to do something a little more official, but this should get you guys started. Should get you guys close. Thanks for watching. Keep your eye out for a couple more videos. See you soon.